evening and thank you for joining us for this event. Joining me in just a few minutes is Kyleen Ogden, the nutritionist for the NBA and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Kyleen's going to be discussing ways to fight fatigue with your fork to get the most out of your daily life, as well as preparing yourself physically for the future. This event is part of our ongoing effort to inform and update you with timely and relevant information. And we appreciate your joining us this evening. The coronavirus and government response is clearly a rapidly evolving situation. And we will continue to put updates on our website and reach out to you personally. Most importantly, our entire team is here for you, your family and your friends. So please let us know if you have any questions or concerns. We do understand that the market volatility and uncertainty with the response to the coronavirus can be unsettling. There's a lot we don't know, but there's also a lot that we do. And we're gonna take just a few minutes to discuss where we're at here at Carver and what we believe lies ahead from an economic and investment point of view before Kyleen jumps in. I also wanna take just a moment to thank everybody that's expressed support and concern for our team. It's often during the worst of times that we see the best in people, and this has certainly been no exception. Now, your health and well-being are our most important priority. And while our office has remained open to drop off checks, paperwork, and notarizing documents, we continue to hold regular planning meetings via phone and virtually rather than in person. And our team continues to evaluate when it's going to be appropriate to do in-person meetings safely. We're closely following both the state of Ohio rules and all CDC guidelines, but because many of our clients meet the criteria as more vulnerable, we are gonna take a very conservative approach. And quite frankly, the digital and phone meetings have been working very well. Now, since founding Carver Financial Services 30 years ago, we've continued to evolve so we can fulfill our mission of helping you simplify your life while achieving your personal vision in a changing world. And the next month, you're gonna see some visible changes to our logo and hear some more about an updated investment process for the coming years. As businesses reopen in Ohio and across the country, there's gonna be new guidelines and expectations for how we work, play and interact, and we continue to respond to that. Now in 2019 and earlier this year, we made some large investments in infrastructure, human resources, and technology so that we would be prepared for the challenges we're facing today and those that happen in the future. And we remain committed to providing a great personal experience for you. And with that in mind, we hired our newest team member just a few weeks ago, Olivia, who will be working on the front desk and you may hear from. Now, the other thing is we keep hearing more about a post-corona crisis, new normal. And in an increasingly complex and confusing world, hopefully we can cut through some of the noise to help you understand what's happening and what's important to you. Crises, events, and innovation have always fundamentally changed how we live and work. And frankly, that's not new. Moreover, once we come out the other side of any crisis, businesses are often stronger and more efficient than before the event. And we believe that's gonna be the case now as it has been in the past. In the coming months, we expect continued negative media regarding the coronavirus, markets, and economy. And we expect more volatility as a result. We do foresee hearing about some of the highest unemployment numbers ever and hearing terms like depression and recession, which the media is already speaking about. We also expect to hear poor corporate earnings numbers and increasing deaths from the coronavirus. And understand this can be very unsettling. As things reopen, it is gonna cause some issues with the virus and it may cause some concern about more shutdowns. Now it's important to note that the role of the media is not to inform, but to sell advertising. As we see, there, there are millions of websites, magazines, and channels competing for attention. It's kind of ironic 
it's illegal to scream fire in a crowded theater. And yet that's really what the media seems to do every day. And so while we don't know what the ultimate extent of the virus will be from a public health standpoint, we do believe the overall economy will recover strongly. The response to this pandemic and the shutdown by the government has been unprecedented, but so is the $3 trillion that they've spent already. We've seen a number of bills uh, coming out, and now this discussion of the largest bill yet. Markets can handle bad news, but they don't like uncertainty. As we get more clarity on what lies ahead, economically and politically, we do think things will start to stabilize. The next big issue is going to be the election. Our planning process considers the type of volatility they are experiencing now. And frankly, the market correction was neither unexpected nor is it unprecedented. What is unprecedented is the speed at which change is happening. And this can also provide an opportunity for those who are prepared and proactive. And as we said, while the speed of the market movements is extraordinary, so is the government's response with unprecedented monetary and fiscal action by the government. As businesses are permitted to reopen, we expect both the unemployment and corporate earnings numbers to improve. It's important to note as economic figures are released, they're always backwards looking. So often we hear about a recession, but we're already moving out of it. And although the downturn we've experienced is unsettling and things may get worse before they get better, this has in fact been less severe than other drops and we believe the slowdown will be relatively short-lived. As you can see in the slide that's up on the screen, in 1987, we were down 34%. In 01 and 02, 30% and 34% respectively. 2009, 49%, followed by 28% um, the next year, and then 20% in 2018. So we've seen these types of things before, and sometimes it's going to feel like it'd be better to get out of the investments and wait for things to get better. And frankly, while this is understandable, it doesn't work for a number of reasons. First of all, you have to be right when to get out and when to get back in again. Second of all, the best time to get in is when things get worse. And if people are concerned in the first place, it's very hard to get back in as they get worse. Third of all, there can be tax consequences. Moreover, you may miss some of the very best days that are mixed with the worst days. And missing just a few of the best days can have a major impact on returns. According to a University of Michigan study, 96% of market gains occurred in just 0.9% of the days between 1963 and 2004. That means of 14,830 days, virtually all of the money was made in 135 days. It's very difficult to figure out what those days are. So getting in and out can have very negative impact over time. Now on March 9th, the S&P declined by 7%, triggering what's called a level one breaker halt for 15 minutes. The same thing happened on March 12th, March 16th, and March 18th. And then on March 24th, the Dow Jones rose over 2,000 points for 11% in one day, the biggest gain since 1933. So somebody that again was jumping in and out because the negative days ended up missing that, that return. The week of April 10th, the Dow Jones was up 13% for the week, which is more than 27% from its low. So we don't have a crystal ball, but I think people act as if they do. As you can see on the left, missing just a few of the best days has a dramatic impact on returns. If you had invested $100,000 in January of 1999 and let it sit till December of last year, 2019, that $100,000 grew to $324,000. $166. If you missed 
just the 10 best days. So one day every other year, the return gets cut in half to 170,000. And if you miss the 40 best days out of 20 years, your 100,000 went down to $47,000. So in our opinion, the biggest risk that most people face today is not the markets. It's diverging from the long-term plan or making changes based on fear or emotions, selling things and waiting for things to get better. Timing the markets is impossible. And frankly, with a properly allocated portfolio is unnecessary. So if you're a client of ours, we will reach out to you for regular planning meetings. If you're not a client, we're always happy to speak with you about your individual vision and provide a second opinion. While the world continues to change, our promise of helping you achieve your personal vision remains constant. And the fact is we will move past the current turmoil. Inevitably, there's gonna be another crisis or change ahead. And no matter what the future brings, we're proud to share that journey with you. Now, people often ask, what do you think is going to happen? And, and frankly, this is the wrong question. It's not about what's going to happen to the markets, but how will what's happening impact me? And the answer again is, if we're properly allocated, it shouldn't impact you. Now, we don't have a crystal ball, but the good news is our personal vision planning process is not dependent on predictions. Rather, it's based on your needs with the understanding that unforeseen events can and do happen. And our process is proactive rather than reactive. So we're gonna have cash and fixed income based on what you've told us are your needs so that we can ride out periods of fluctuation. And while they may be disconcerting, they should not have an impact. Now we believe that the market and portfolio volatility can actually provide opportunities to reallocate cash into markets to generate tax write-offs and to convert tax deferred funds to tax exempt. There are also some positive things on a macro level. As we said, companies that prevail through this will inevitably be stronger. And we're seeing more use of technology for meetings like tonight and collaboration. We will touch base with you on any opportunities specific to your situation in our planning meetings or if we see something in between. Of course, if you have questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to your advisor as well. Feel free to email or call and we'd be happy to address it. Now we're very excited to introduce our special guest speaker, Kylie Bogdan, nutritionist for the NBA and the Cleveland Cavs. As mentioned, your health and well-being are our most important priority. How we eat can directly impact how we feel and how healthy we really are. And we're very excited to have one of the leading experts with us this evening. Kyleen is the first board certified sports dietitian in the United States to complete the Institute for Functional Medicine's five day intensive course. Kyleen has studied under some of the most respected functional medicine physicians in the country. She holds a bachelor's degree in nutrition and dietetics, a master's degree in exercise physiology, and her accredited dietetic internship through Tulane University. Kylene specializes in using nutrition to reverse chronic ailments by addressing food sensitivities, gut health, and nutrient deficiencies, and by creating personalized fueling strategies, just like we create personalized financial plans, she's been able to help and improve health and performance of a wide array of individual athletes ranging from Olympic to high school. She's worked at NFL, NBA, and more. Kylie has been quoted as an expert source in publications such as US News and World Report, O Magazine, Time, Prevention, Huffington Post, and Women's Health Magazine. She is currently the dietitian for the Cleveland Cavs and runs the blog FordFuel.com. It's my privilege and honor to introduce Kylie. Hi. Thank you so much, Randy, and everyone at Carver Financial. And of course, 
everyone tuning in this evening. It means a lot to me that you're hanging out with us during this quarantine. I promise to make it worth your while. I love this presentation and this topic so much because it does not matter if you are one of the greatest athletes in the world or you are chronically ill, strapped to a hospital bed. This information applies to you. So without further ado, let's get rolling. How do you fight fatigue with your fork? All right, so today's agenda. We have, why am I always so tired? And by the way, maybe if fatigue isn't an issue for you, insert whatever you'd like into that bubble. Maybe it's migraines, maybe it's joint pain, maybe it's chronic sinus issues or skin issues like acne, eczema, you know, hives, psoriasis, whatever it may be. And so we'll talk about that a little bit. You know, how do we reverse that? So much of that can be reversed with food alone. It's pretty incredible. That's why I love my job. And then part two here, what does great nutrition look like for the average person? You know, everything is vegan and then paleo and then keto. But what about Mediterranean? You know, how do you know what's best for you? So we'll be talking about that. I'm going to kind of weave in a few famous nutrition myths and debunk them. And then, of course, we'll have a few take-home tips that you can take with you for long-term success. All right, so does any of this sound familiar? Do you ever wish you could take a nap after you eat, even if it wasn't Thanksgiving dinner? Or do you struggle to get through the day or even the morning without caffeine? I mean, are you that person that needs a cup of coffee or two or a Red Bull to even drive your car into work or check a few emails? If so, that is not good. I know we love to blame it on stress and aging. And yes, that does play a role but it's not everything. Or are you the kind of person that's going from meeting to meeting and just you're busy with family and errands and you're kind of picking at food like a little bird all day long, you eat almost nothing, and then all of a sudden it's dinner time and you're binging and you're eating three different servings and then you might have, you know, a little bowl of ice cream before bed too, right? That, that is not good. And then uh, last but not least, are you the person that ferociously looks for candy at 3 p.m. to kind of pick you up? Or maybe it's another cup of coffee, whatever it may be, that is a problem, and we're going to address that today. All right. So, oh, slide looks a little funky there. But um, if any of this applies to you, whether it's fatigue, the inability to lose weight, you know, maybe you're not going to the bathroom every day. By the way, everyone tuning in, every living, breathing human should be going number two at least once a day, ideally twice. And if you're not, Houston, we have a problem. So, and the same goes for the opposite end of the spectrum. Like, you shouldn't be flying off to the bathroom after every meal. You know, you shouldn't have a headache every day. You shouldn't have really any kind of GI issues, muscle issues, anything chronic. You know, this stuff happens to all of us once a week, once a month, whatever, every now and then. But if you find yourself going through any of these issues, especially if you have any kind of autoimmune conditions like celiac disease or Hashimoto's, which is a thyroid condition, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, you name it, that means it's probably time to tweak nutrition. And it really means we need to tweak nutrition if you're not responding to medication. So if it's meds, surgeries, procedures, and you kind of feel like, eh, I'm not really sure if this is working or if that process worked, you know, I'm scared now. Don't be scared. Be excited. This is the time to change your environment and your food. And newsflash, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, but guess what? In this country, at least, we are more sick more exhausted and more overweight than ever before. This is the worst it's been in American history. We have more autoimmune disease and infertility than we've ever seen. Look at our children. They have more behavior issues than ever before. And kind of paired along with that, mental illness is at an all-time high. This is, this is a problem. This is not coincidence. This isn't, oh, we're diagnosing a lot better. Sure, that, that plays a little bit of a role, but so much of it is our food and environment. So that's why I chose this as a topic for today. A little bit here. Okay. All right. So, you know, why does this matter? Why does food relate to mental health or joint pain or fatigue or anything in between? Because the gut and the brain directly connect through the vagus nerve. I mean, they're literally best friends. They talk all day long. When the gut isn't happy, the brain isn't happy. Or when the, when the brain's very excited, the gut's very happy too. So they're constantly communicating. And the vast majority of the human immune system lives in your gut. In fact, 70, approximately 77%. I mean, that's pretty unbelievable when you think about it, but that's how we can use food to reverse chronic conditions that clients were told, well, you know, by their doctor, by their world-renowned doctor that, eh, it's aging, there's nothing you can do, eh, it's overtraining syndrome, oh, you're stressed, oh, you're a busy parent, you're working hard, it's okay. No, it's not okay. You shouldn't be feeling much of this at any point in your life. 
And so we need to keep the gut happy. We rebalance the gut to rebalance the brain. It's so funny, you know, Randy mentioned I work with a lot of NFL athletes and especially my former NFL players. Many of them who had a lot of trauma, you know, in, in terms of concussions mainly, tended to have the worst gut issues and the most food sensitivities when they came to my office. Or if any of you run marathons or even 5Ks and you notice the porta potty line is crazy before the race, the gut and the brain connect. When you're nervous, you know, things, when you're nervous up here, things might be a little rumbly down here. So anyway, moving on to DNA. So kind of along with this, food codes your DNA. It literally sends signals like little microchips all day long, kind of like a typewriter to your DNA. Why does this matter? Because at the start of my career, I was always taught your DNA is your DNA. There's not much you can do about that. Sorry, poor genetics. Good luck. You know, cancer, autoimmunity, whatever it is. And now we know that you might carry that gene, but there is a chance that if you take care of yourself and you eat well and you pay attention to your environment, you sleep well, you manage stress, you might be able to silence those nasty genes. So yes, you know, the worst form of cancer could be coming down the pipeline for you or thyroid disease or, or you name it, celiac disease. But again, just because you carry the gene doesn't mean you're ever going to experience that, even if mom, grandma, sister, cousin, dad, brother, whoever um, experienced that. So that's so cool because I know there's no guarantees. But if you could get a handle on things with your diet alone, why wouldn't you at least try, right? All right, so these are key tips. In fact, I really wish you would whip out your cell phones right now and take a picture of this slide because guess what? This information is never going to change. And it applies to every single living, breathing human in your house. I don't care if you're two years old or 92 years old. I don't care if you're a pro athlete, if you've never played a sport in your life. These are the keys for human health. Number one, eat real food. So again, keto, paleo, vegan, whatever you want to do, eat real food. Try not to eat much food that comes out of a package. Number two, always incorporate as many colorful plants as humanly possible. In a dream world, you would aim for three different colors on your plate at each meal. So maybe you have a smoothie in the morning, you throw in blueberries, you know, green spinach, and maybe, you know, bright red cherries or a little orange sweet potato cooked in there, it actually tastes really good. I mean, the possibilities are endless, but the more color you eat, the more it actually reverses damage at the cellular level. So, I mean, that's pretty profound, and it can prevent a lot of medication use as years pass. Number three, every meal should contain a palm full of, well, not really a palm full, I guess it depends how big your palm is, what you're eating, what your goals are, but let's put it this way. A couple tablespoons, a tablespoon or two of good quality fat. So maybe you're putting peanut butter in your oatmeal. Maybe you're putting, like a like for my pro athletes, I'll, really any of my clients, I take avocado, slice it into a few chunks, freeze it, throw that into the smoothie for their fat. Doesn't taste like anything. It gives a milkshake-like texture, and it's just, it gets more color, it gets more fat. You could cook your eggs in, I don't know, coconut oil. So many options. But good quality fat helps to keep you full. It controls blood sugar and it regulates your hormones. And I would say this is one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're trying to eat well, lose weight, improve body composition, all right? And then last but not least, for most of you, you will benefit from eating every three to four hours when you are awake. So just think about that. It controls blood sugar, it helps you feel better, and again, it prevents overeating. So long-term, energy is better, sleep is better, and everything in between. So a balanced breakfast, I just want to throw this in there because some people are probably rolling their eyes thinking, I don't have time for this. I don't have time to make my own food and cook from scratch. Guess what? Either do I, but I promise you this is one of the best tricks in the book. Opt for smoothies. Even if you don't think you like smoothies, just try a few different flavor combinations and I promise it might be more exciting than you think. But this is the template for a smoothie. I say this because so many people just have fruit juice and yogurt and fruit in the morning and like blend it together and think it's maybe they'll throw a few spinach leaves in, but they think it's a good idea, but that's not going to help anyone's hunger. That's not going to help with anything. So just make sure that you are eating. Um, you're literally eating a meal in your blender format. That means 15, to 20 grams of protein, whatever your protein powder is, eight to 12 ounces of liquid, one tablespoon of plant-based fat, larger men might be closer to two, three fourths of a cup of frozen fruit, one teaspoon of an anti-inflammatory spice, and an optional handful of leafy greens. So next slide will actually show you, though, what a great example would look like. So I know this probably sounds overwhelming. Again, you should take a picture with your phone if this sounds good to you. 
but this is one of my favorite combinations. For those who are kind of sensitive with tastes and textures, and you're thinking, Ugh, I'm not gonna eat a you know powdered chalky protein powder that's disgusting, then try this one first. And you know what? Double the cinnamon if you're nervous. I promise this is my fan favorite across the board. Some of my pro athletes eat like seventh grade children, so you have to learn the tricks of the trade. All right, so instead of being so obsessed with calorie counting, which is, you know, the vast majority of our country. Oh, nope, one more slide. Slide master, go back one. All right, so this is what the ideal human plate should look like. M more times than not, half of your plate should be vegetables. Big palm full of lean protein, whatever your favorite is, works for me. And one fourth of that plate will be quality carbohydrate, whether it's rice or quinoa, oatmeal, depends on the time of day. So you might be eating the right foods, but it could be in the wrong portion. Or let's say that you're going to Chipotle tonight. Then you go, you order the bowl, you ask for double the vegetables, decrease the rice a little bit, and you ask for a great serving of chicken or sofritas or whatever it is that you like. You can mimic this no matter what you're doing. If you're cooking, if you're making a soup or a stew, just double the vegetables in the recipe, keep the meat where it is, and maybe, maybe kind of cut back on the carbohydrate a little bit. Obviously, this is very different if you're a professional athlete or, or, or an intense athlete training two hours a day, but the average human should have a plate that looks like this. Okay, now we're ready for the next slide. Okay, so this is an example day of premium fuel. It's all real food. It's all basic food. It's food you can get at, I mean, anywhere, literally Aldi, Walmart, wherever you are in the country. You know, your most, most affordable grocery store can carries all these foods. It doesn't have to be very expensive at Whole Foods or, or sometimes whole, whole paycheck, as some will joke. But if you are feeling fatigued, if you're feeling poorly, if you just, if something just doesn't feel right, take this day of eating and just eat it three days in a row. Of course, diversity is the spice of life. We always want to have different food, but that's, that's a different conversation for another day. Take this eating regimen and do it for the next three days. And notice that you may feel a lot better. Or before you start, take note of your symptoms. Maybe, you know, on a scale of one to 10, what are your headaches? What is your joint pain? What is your energy level like at 10 a.m. versus 3 p.m.? It matters. Then you'll implement this for three days and then you will rank your symptoms again at the end. If you feel great though, go longer than three days. Don't cheat yourself. Five to even 10 days would be outstanding or longer if you can. And if you message me on Instagram, I can actually give you more, you know, smoothie recipes or ideas if you, if you need that, snacks, whatever. But Forward Fuel is my handle if you want to message or reach out. I say that because a lot of you are probably going to email me after this, and I don't, I receive so many emails, I, I may not get it. So anyway, all right, moving on. So a little bonus slide for you here, the best foods for inflammation. What I want you to understand is that acute inflammation is, oh my gosh, I hit my knee, I have a huge bruise or I'm bleeding, or I have an open wound or a sore. Chronic inflammation is, man, my gut feels funky. I'm bloated all the time. I don't go poop every day. You know, my sleep is really restless. It's really crummy, and I wake up not feeling refreshed. My hands hurt in the morning. I can, I can barely move. I blow my nose after I eat, or I'm always congested. Those are signs of chronic inflammation. So we have to use food to try to fight that, because remember, about 77% of the immune system is in your gut. So... We're looking at ginger here, which I know it kind of looks like ginger and turmeric look like weird bugs or cockroaches sometimes, but ginger is a spice, aids in digestion, it makes you feel great. So whether you want to chop it in little pieces and put it in your smoothie or your stir fry, or you can actually freeze ginger, by the way, peel it and freeze it, and you can you could boil it and make tea. I mean, there's just so many options. The same exact thing for turmeric, um, but try to incorporate those once, twice, three times a week if you're an all-star. Uh, top right is tart cherries. So much research on tart cherries and inflammation. Plus, they're awesome for helping you to sleep. A little bit of natural melatonin in there. So again, have a little bit of the, you could have a little bit of the juice watered down. You could add a little bit of the frozen cherries to a smoothie. I have some clients who actually will boil it down and make a sauce out of it for their chicken, uh, which I thought sounded great. Might look into that myself. Uh, cinnamon is the fan favorite, I would say. Most people enjoy cinnamon. They know what's, how to use it. They know where to put it. You know, bathe yourself in cinnamon. I don't really care, but it's a great thing to do. It actually helps with blood sugar control, too. And last but not least, we have pineapple, which is it's sort of like I joke with my Cavs players. I tell them, this is, this is nature's Motrin, you know? So make sure you use this as much as you can, whether you're cooking or making a healthy, a clean, healthy dessert, you know, putting it in your chicken again. I don't know. But these are some of the top foods for inflammation. So... I was re I request here to put a little bit of a little quarantine tidbit. So if anyone's freaking out, gaining weight, 
you know, I was joking calling it the quarantine 15, but some of my clients, my younger clients said, no, it's the COVID-19. So if you're, you're getting the COVID-19 or the quarantine 15, whatever it is, or you don't feel well, this is what I want you to do. Keep a set schedule. Please, please, please do not watch Netflix until two o'clock in the morning. I know it sounds very appetizing, but it completely messes with your circadian rhythm. It completely throws the hormones out of whack that are responsible for gut regulation, hormonal balance, and just your appetite, your satiety. So try to have a similar bedtime and wake up time every day. As much as it might pain you at first, I promise you it'll start controlling your sugar cravings and everything in between. If you can, gosh, this weather hasn't been all that great, but if it gets better, you know, be outside when the sun is rising in the morning, or if that's not, if that's too early for you, try to get out before 2 p.m., and that will help to regulate the circadian rhythm because so many of us are looking at screens all day. It's, it's a disaster. Try to set a timer, like actually set a timer in your phone for your meals. Try to eat every three to four hours when you're awake. I already mentioned that, but worth saying again. And then keep a large water bottle by your side at all times. Just sip, sip, sip all day. Okay, and then part two here. Hopefully you're not skipping breakfast, but when you do have breakfast, don't skip the protein and the fat. Please put some kind of protein and good quality fat at every breakfast, every day until you die, but especially during the quarantine. In other words, don't whip out the little pastries, please, or the strudels. Please don't get the, the sugary cereal and pour skim milk all over it. You're, you're asking for hunger. You're asking for weight gain. You're asking for terrible stability when it comes to energy. And just keep added sugar out of the house. I mean, yeah, it's an old school rule, but it might be helpful during the quarantine to not keep sugar in the house. And last but not least, blue light blocking glasses. So nerdy and so weird looking, but they might be a game changer for you because they actually help kind of block some of the blue light coming through on your screen from your phone, your TV, your computer, because that blue light blocks melatonin production. Melatonin is a hormone that helps you sleep. And if you are just constantly staring at your screen, even if you're not stressed, but you're staring at your screen up until bedtime, you will never, ever, ever reach that deep REM, like re refreshing sleep that you are looking for. And, and that, that leads to everything from fatigue, um, poor recovery if you're an athlete, joint pain, everything in between. So now for the bonus take homes that you can take with you for life, whether you're fighting fatigue, disease, or whatever it may be, we are going to go over my top 10 tips that I want you to carry with you for life. All right, so number one, sure I mentioned this already, but it's worth hitting home again. Please make sure you eat real food. You may think that you are, but, but if you're eating mostly out of a package and you don't recognize or pronounce half of the ingredients on the label, we are in trouble. Or long story short, if you can't, if you can't find it in your grandmother's kitchen, please put it back on the shelf and find something else. I promise you, your favorite foods can be made within minutes and can be made with three to five ingredients. Like crackers, for example. It's a recipe. Delicious almond flour crackers can be made with three ingredients. I mean, message me if you have questions. That is what I'm here for. It's what I specialize in. You know, when I'm not with uh, professional athletes, I have a private practice at night or when the team's out of town. And, and that's literally what I do all day long is develop recipes and meal ideas. And I, I coach people how to change, how to eat real food to reverse chronic symptoms. Okay, number two, we have stop obsessing over calories. I know you've probably heard your whole life, calories in, calories out, because that's what I've heard my whole life. And it's what I learned in college. But now we know nutrition is so much more of an intricate and complicated science. You cannot just count calories. Our metabolism, our metabolism is different. Our genetics are different. Um, our environment is different. I mean, our training, our activity is so different. So you can't just tell someone to count calories. Plus, protein, carbohydrate, and fat all digest and absorb so differently that you can't just say, well, 1,200 calories for me today. This is great. I'm going to lose 10 pounds in a week because it just doesn't work that way. All right. And number three, we have... Avoid eating late. Easier said than done. Trust me, I know. But in a dream world, if you could try to stop eating anywhere from one to three hours before bed, whatever is realistic for you is critical. Your body needs to digest before it rests. When it tries to do both activities at the same time, sleep is often compromised and or digestive health is compromised. You might wake up feeling kind of slow or bloated. I have some clients that run to the toilet in the middle of the night or your sleep is just restless and you wonder why you feel like garbage in the morning, it's because the mitochondria, the powerhouse of all your little cells, needs time to rest and repair. You need about 10 to 12 hours without food 
to repair. Even broccoli, one of the best foods on the planet, is really difficult to digest. Your body works so hard to digest food, and if you never give your body a break, how will you ever have adequate sleep? Sometimes that's the only reason alone that people are exhausted. They're eating well, their stress is under control, but they're eating late, and they're not allowing for that repair. And then they wake up tired, chugging coffee, the cycle repeats. All right, so number four. We have shovel strategically, totally a nerdy dietitian joke, but snacks are a great thing for most people, but it matters what you're putting down the pie hole. Is it chocolate? Is it chip? Is it an abundance of crackers? Is it like mm, a little few bites of donuts from, from yesterday morning? You know, I need you to eat real food. And again, just message me on Instagram. If you want me to email you the snack sheet, it'll take me two seconds. I designed something that's more of a real food snack sheet. Squeezable applesauce, chia pudding. I have a recipe for overnight oats on my blog. I have a recipe for a protein packed cookie dough, which is so good. So just go to Forward Fuel, Google cookie dough in the, in the box. Uh, flavored pumpkin seeds, mixed nuts. I mean, leathers. There's so many options of quick snacks that are made from real food. So implement those in addition to the eating at regular times, and you may feel like a different human being, okay? All right. Next, we have incorporate fat with every meal. Already mentioned, but I wanted to put it as number five because some people still don't understand what fat is. Like, obviously we're not eating, you know, a spoonful of lard at every meal, but olives, avocado, avocado oil, coconut in any form, uh, nut butters, and maybe you didn't know this, but there's a lot more to this world than peanut butter. Cashew butter is so good. Pecan butter is so good. Macadamia nut butter. I mean, there's so many options. For those who have nut allergies, sunflower seed butter is outstanding. And now they have watermelon seed butter. Maybe not my favorite flavor, but it's incredible if you have someone in the home that has allergies, food allergies, nut allergies. Um, so yeah, nuts and seeds, of course, you, you probably got that. But anyway, try to sprinkle in a little bit of this at each meal. And anyone freaking out about coconut, coconut is a great form of natural fat. Just don't be the blogger that bathes in it all day. Shampoo, snack, breakfast, lunch, dinner, coconut oil, because your genetics do matter. You know, I have some clients that can eat five tablespoons of coconut butter all day long and nothing will happen. Their cholesterol panel is beautiful. And others will basically come into the kitchen and sniff it and everything is a disaster. So just make sure that you're incorporating good quality fat, varying it throughout the day, okay? Number six, don't fear supplementation. So this is really interesting because I was always taught you should eat a balanced diet, and when you do, you don't need any kind of supplements. Um, I wish that was true, but guess what? It's 2020, and we're in America, and we're stressed. We're juggling a million things. Our soil doesn't have the quality that it once does, that it once did, and there's just so much packaged food and so much on-the-go running around. It is incredible, and your genetics, again, play a role. So, and if your gut health is compromised, if your gut is kind of funky, you could be eating the most beautifully balanced diet, but you might not actually be digesting and absorbing the food. So basic supplementation, at least for most of you who don't have direct sunlight like we do here in Northeast Ohio, a professional grade multivitamin with vitamin D built in is really important for most humans. Fish oil, good quality fish oil not filled with mercury is awesome to fight inflammation. Magnesium citrate before bed will help relax your muscles. And I should probably tell you this, citrate is for my constipated peeps, and magnesium glycinate is for those who have no trouble going to the bathroom. But take it one hour before bed. And it's just cool because magnesium is responsible for over 300 enzymatic reactions. So you're sort of like filling in a void that most of us are deficient in. And I guess last but not least, I want to say again that nutrition deficiencies are one of the biggest reasons for fatigue and exacerbation of chronic disease. So basically... If you walk into a cancer diagnosis or an autoimmune diagnosis and your nutrition status is a disaster, the effects and the symptoms will be so much worse if your nutrition was not on point before you even fell into this mess. Okay, number seven, try to eat every three to four hours when you're awake. I really mean it, set a timer on your phone. This will help curb sugar cravings. It significantly prevents overeating, especially when you are quarantined. Of all times in your entire life, to get on an eating and sleeping schedule, please let it be now. Please, I promise. This is one of the biggest game changers. Because that way, if you kind of weave out the cobwebs and kind of do the little windshield wiper and figure out, oh my gosh, I was eating late, or oh, my meal timing was terrible, you could prevent so many doctor's visits and hospital visits and sick days at work if you just get this under control. So, extremely important. And please don't be the person that binges on everything sugar-free. Diet this, diet popsicles, diet yogurt, no sugar this. 
watch because sometimes no sugar is a great thing. It just means it's a natural food. There's no added sugar. But most of the time, at least in our grocery stores around here, it means diet. It means an artificial sweetener was used to take the place of sugar, which sounds good in theory because you're seeing zeros across the labels, but it totally rips apart the bacteria in your gut. And when that bacteria in your gut is out of whack and that ecosystem is no longer balanced, all of a sudden you may find that you don't digest foods that you once ate your whole life. Or all of a sudden you're slapped with this chronic disease diagnosis and you're thinking, what? This wasn't in my genetics. Where did this come from? Many times it's because over years and years and years, we're eating junk food and we're taking things like antibiotics and artificial sweeteners that totally cause a lot of turmoil in that ecosystem. So please just eat the real thing and you'll be more satisfied. You won't crave sugar as intensely if you just eat real food. Go for the maple, go for the honey, go for the real sources, use them in moderation and you won't rip apart your microbiome. <laughs> All right, so read like a pro. If you flip over your favorite, go to your you know, cap you know, cabinet cupboard tonight after we're done, Go whip out your favorite snacks, your foods, your frozen dinners, whatever. If you don't understand or recognize the ingredients, we have to find something else. I'm not asking you to throw away your food, but let's pick a different alternative for the next time you go to the grocery store. So most of us are inclined to look at the nutrition fact sheet, like how many grams of protein, how many grams of sugar, fiber, whatever. I mean, that's important, but go to the ingredient list first, because if that's garbage, I don't care how low the sugar is. I don't care how high the protein is. If you don't recognize what you're ingesting, you're, you're begging for chronic inflammation. You are waking up and begging for fatigue every single day and you're relying on coffee or Red Bull or an abundance of B vitamins to mask that fatigue. Read like a pro. All right, our last one. Be in tune with your body. Sorry, I'm not sure why the slide's crazy here. So always, always, always be in tune. That means please at some point in your life, ideally the next month, Please keep a symptom, not just a food journal, but food and symptom. I want to know how you feel after you eat. Are you energized? Are you sluggish? Are you running to the bathroom? And then you can use that to draw patterns and kind of create almost like an individualized nutrition approach for yourself. You know, are you, are you under eating? Are you almost eating nothing earlier in the day, binging late at night? So maybe the food choices are fine, but the timing is off. Or maybe you say like, wow, I'm starving all the time. And you know what? I went back to those top 10 tips and I'm not getting enough fat. Or you know what? I get migraines and I run to the bathroom to urinate every time I have a diet soda, diet pop, diet coke, wherever you're living, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that is a problem. That's inflammation. And if you can start to detect these issues today, my gosh, you will save yourself thousands of dollars down the road in healthcare costs, in nursing homes and whatever, whatever you have it, you know, whatever your genetics dictate. There's so much you can control today. So I encourage you to do so. And last but not least, eat real food. Start your morning with fat and protein. Always, 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 always. It doesn't matter if you're vegan, vegetarian, paleo. It doesn't matter. Find your protein, stick to it, and incorporate a little bit of fat. Try to eat every three to four hours when you're awake. Focus on the ingredient, not the actual label with grams of protein, fat, carbohydrate, fiber. Uh, listen to your body and take notes. Always, always, always. Even if you're just doing it in your, in your iPhone, it's fine. Just do something. Consider basic supplementation, even if it's just a high quality multivitamin every day. And I can help you with brands, by the way. I have articles on this. And then last but not least, let your body digest and then rest at night for quality sleep. Of course, with your, with your awkward blue light glasses, all right? And just remember, you are only as good as your last meal. And if you'd like to contact me, I probably respond fastest to Instagram that goes right to my phone. My blog is also option number two, but I'll be honest, I receive so many emails. Sometimes it's hard to answer questions, but I appreciate your time so much this evening. I love what I do. I love talking about food and I'm always here if you need anything else at all. And one more huge thank you to Randy and everyone at Carver Financial. This was really great. Thanks, Kylie. And thanks to all of you for joining us. You know, we hope you put to good use all the information that Kylie has shared. Whether it's investing or your diet, having great information really doesn't do anything unless you act upon it and execute. So hopefully you do. We will be uploading a recording of this event in the next few days on our YouTube channel. Uh, and we'll also have it on our website. And of course, you're welcome to share it. With everything that's happening, we understand that your friends and family may have questions or just want a second opinion on what they're doing. We're always happy to speak to them without cost obligation, whether they're clients or not. And of course, we do continue to update our COVID-19 resource page 
on a website. It's got all kinds of links and information for you. So our team would like to thank you for joining us this evening. I want to thank our team who continues to do a great job. Thank our guest this evening, Kylene, and also thank Scott and Podworks for his amazing job with the technology and production tonight. I've been in business for 34 years. Carver Financial Service has been in business for 30 years. We've weathered many storms by keeping our focus on the well-being of our clients, our team, and our community. There remains a lot of uncertainty, and yet that's always been the case. So regardless of what transpires, we're here for you, and we appreciate the opportunity to share your journey. So thank you for joining us. Please stay healthy, stay safe, and have a good evening.